This is the shore of an island in Cueva National Park, Panama's national park with the largest expanse of marine territory. It was a penal colony from 1919 until 2004, and as a result was mainly spared from having its ecosystem disturbed. Cueva is a pristine biological site, home to several endemic species, which are species that occur nowhere else in the world, as well as many endangered species. Cueva has ecosystems which promote high levels of biodiversity, such as mangroves and coral reefs, making it a biodiversity hotspot. The ease of access to these biodiverse sites makes Cueva an ideal site for scientific research and training. I think what, so I've done field work in a lot of different places. I've done field work on ships, um, in Gamboa, in Mexico, like all over the place. But what I find most appealing and engaging about Cuiba is the rawness of it. And I think that it's really difficult this day and age to find something this pristine is not even the word I would use. Yes, it's pristine, but it's also there's a rawness quality to it. Um, and I think that's what I find most appealing. Scientists from diverse backgrounds can come to Cuiba to learn techniques in marine biology, as demonstrated by the Joint McGill Stry Tropical Biology Field Course. The first course is to bring a diverse group of graduate students to Cueva. The students come from many different personal and scientific backgrounds and include students trained in anthropology, ecology, botany, ornithology, students who have some snorkeling experience or no snorkeling experience. For young scientists, I think that this is a great opportunity to, to get a broad understanding of tropical ecosystems and to learn more about the research and the facilities at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute and also to just discover the area of research that they enjoy most. Students who do a lot of lecture courses and see a lot of the science as it is represented you know, through presentations or through the theory get a little bit of a biased perspective of what really happens. Sometimes research doesn't work out, sometimes it's extremely messy, and a lot of those pieces uh, don't get shown in presentations. And by kind of getting your hands dirty, dirty jumping into a field course, um, you get to see the process of science on the ground. You see all the little steps, all the human mistakes that happen, all the ways that scientists deal with these mistakes or um, accommodate uh, different situations and so you see kind of that flexibility and versatility that creativity that really comes out when you're put in these situations and you have a project to do and um, you really have to work with what you have. Field courses like this train students to independently come up with hypotheses and develop methodologies to test them which will help their scientific careers and also contributes to the understanding of Koiba's biodiversity. In this course, students have developed projects which use traditional approaches as well as cutting edge technology. One group decided to get a better understanding of reef predation with a project on the frequency of predation events happening on their custom made squid and algae popsicles placed in various locations in the reef. Another wanted to experimentally compare traditional and novel approaches to biological surveys. They piloted new drone technology to see how aquatic surveys can be improved. Their surveys showed that drone technology promises to bring in a new way of seeing the reefs, sharing previously difficult or impossible to take images and videos of coral reef communities. The mix of traditional and cutting edge approaches and courses that occur here in Cueva will not only improve our understanding of coral reef ecosystems, but also provides hands-on training to the next generation of scientists. These biodiverse sites are not only of scientific value. People interested in the range of life that occurs at these pristine sites can see them, whether it be in person or through the footage from a drone. We talk about ecosystems uh, changing worldwide as, as a consequence of human impacts. And what people see now, for example in the Caribbean, are not ecosystems that are pristine. They've already changed as a result of, result of human impacts. And so we have this shifting baseline where people think that what they see today are what, was, what it was like in the past, but no. So these places here, like places like Koiba, are places where the baseline, the state of the ecosystem is still 
quite pristine compared to other places. By getting people to see the reefs, we can increase public interest in protecting and understanding the biodiversity that occurs not only in reefs, but around the world. National parks like Cueva will continue to play a critical role in our perception and understanding of ecosystems through time.